You think feral pigs causing $2.5 billion in damages each year in the US is a major disaster? Well, in Australia, yellow crazy ants have wreaked even greater havoc. In just a few years, they've established a super colony of 12 billion individuals, 50 times the country's population, wiping out 40 million red crabs and triggering the collapse of an ecosystem over 100 million years old. But the strangest part is this. Australia's reversal of this crisis didn't come from chemicals or machines, but from a creature so tiny you could miss it in the blink of an eye. The parasitic wasp. Why the parasitic wasp? What did this insect do to turn the tide of an ecological catastrophe? Today, let's join Terran Works in exploring the strangest biological battle in Australian history, where a parasitic wasp became the key to saving an entire ecosystem on the brink of collapse. Welcome to Christmas Island, a remote island with just 1,800 residents, yet home to over 200 million red crabs. Have you ever wondered why it's called Christmas Island? The answer dates back to 1643, when a British sea captain stumbled upon the island on Christmas Day. Interestingly, although it was named early on, it wasn't until over 200 years later that humans actually set foot on the island to mine phosphate. A mineral formed from bird droppings, which had nourished the island's nutrient-rich ecosystem. Located in the Indian Ocean and part of Australian territory, Christmas Island has long been known as the Kingdom of Red Crabs, where this species has dominated the ecosystem for millions of years. With over 110,000 crabs for every human resident, the island practically belongs to them. Over 37 million years of isolation, the red crabs have become ecosystem engineers. Digging through soil, clearing leaf litter, and maintaining the flawless rhythm of the rainforest. Every year, the world turns its attention to this tiny island to witness a breathtaking phenomenon. Hundreds of millions of red crabs emerge from the forest, cross roads, climb specially built crab bridges, and descend into the sea to spawn. The spectacle is so iconic that Google once dedicated a doodle to it. This is also why more than 70% of the island is protected as a national park, a sanctuary where endemic species like the giant coconut crab, Abbott's booby bird, and underground rivers coexist in a nearly untouched ecosystem. On Christmas Island, red crabs are not just animals. They are the foundation holding everything together. When the crabs live, the forest breathes. When the crabs vanish, the ecosystem begins to collapse. But that balance didn't last forever. As humans began to appear more frequently on the island, so did the things that came with cargo ships, and among them was a small yet far more dangerous invader than any predator the red crabs had ever faced, the yellow crazy ant. No one knows exactly where they came from, only that sometime in the 20th century they quietly arrived on Christmas Island along with imported goods almost unnoticed. Their name, Crazy doesn't come from madness, but from their erratic movements and incredibly fast attack speed. And in an ecosystem with no natural land-based predators, the arrival of these ants was like unleashing an invader into a defenseless paradise. In just a few years, they began forming massive super colonies, where millions, even billions of individuals functioned as a single unified organism. On Christmas Island, their numbers once reached 12 billion, 50 times the population of Australia. During the rainy season, yellow crazy ants would surge to the surface like a living acid flow, marching straight into red crab territory. Armed with formic acid, one of the strongest naturally occurring acids, they attacked the crab's eyes, blinding them within seconds. Then, thousands of ants would swarm and overwhelm the crabs, killing them in under a day. Locals and scientists once described the scenes as a natural chemical war where tiny creatures wielded biological weapons to bring down animals hundreds of times their size. The results were devastating. In just a few years, the red crab population plummeted from 40 million to as low as 15 million, an unprecedented and catastrophic decline. And it wasn't just the crabs that fell. 
Without their army of leaf-clearing workers, thick layers of decaying leaf litter piled up on the forest floor, making the rainforest drier, more fire-prone, and oxygen-deprived. Young trees sprouted uncontrollably, choking the forest's understory. Endemic birds like Abbott's booby lost their nesting grounds as trees began dying in large numbers. An ecosystem that had operated in harmony for 110 million years began to crack, all in the span of just a few rainy seasons. Have you ever wondered how an invasive species like the yellow crazy ant could grow so explosively on Christmas Island? The answer lies in a strange natural alliance, the yellow lax scale insect. This tiny creature is the key that allowed yellow crazy ants to multiply at a rate beyond anything scientists had previously observed in ecological models. Yellow lax scales cling to tree trunks, feeding on sap and excreting a sweet substance called honeydew. To yellow crazy ants, Honeydew is like high-energy fuel, a constant food source that enables them to reproduce rapidly and stay active non-stop. In exchange for this unlimited food supply, the ants protect the scales like livestock, a form of insect agriculture they've unintentionally developed into an ecological weapon. They chase off or kill every natural predator of the scale insects, causing the scale population to surge across the island. And as the number of scales grows, so does the honeydew, fueling an even greater explosion in the ant population. Scientists describe this relationship as pouring gasoline on a fire. The results are terrifying. In areas where yellow lac scales are present, yellow crazy ant densities increase by up to 95%, turning every square meter of forest into part of a vast super colony. And with no native land predators on Christmas Island, yellow crazy ants face virtually no biological resistance, no birds to eat them, no reptiles in high enough numbers to keep them in check. No natural enemies to slow their reproduction. All they do is spread, centimeter by centimeter each day, until the entire ecosystem is engulfed in the empire of ants. Faced with the explosive spread of yellow crazy ants, humans were forced to intervene. For many years, the only solution Australia could turn to was protein bait laced with fipronil, a highly potent chemical capable of wiping out entire ant colonies from just a few individuals consuming it. The idea sounded simple, but in practice, it proved far more difficult. First, timing was everything. The bait could only be deployed during the dry season, when red crabs were still hidden in their burrows. If the operation was delayed by even a few weeks and overlapped with crab migration season, millions of crabs could accidentally consume the toxic bait and die en masse. A single misstep could turn a conservation campaign into a second ecological disaster. Even with perfect timing, deploying the bait was still a logistical nightmare. Yellow crazy ant strongholds were located in rugged terrain, cliffs, dense rainforests, and deep valleys. Helicopters had to be used to drop the bait from above, at a density of about 6 pounds per acre. And at one point, it seemed like victory was within reach. Within just four weeks, ant numbers had dropped by 99%. But the relief was short-lived. From untreated corners of the forest, the yellow crazy ants re-emerged. Stronger, more numerous, and seemingly immune to previous efforts. Using fipronil was like mowing weeds without pulling out the roots. The surface looked clean for a few months, but underground, the supercolony continued to silently regenerate. Worse still, fipronil didn't discriminate between friend and foe. It killed native insects as well, disrupting food chains and leaving conservationists with a troubling question. Are we saving the ecosystem by destroying it? On top of that, each large-scale campaign could cost between $1.3 and $2 million, not including manpower, equipment, and the risks involved. All of this pointed to a sobering truth. Chemicals could not be the long-term answer. When all options had reached a dead end, Australia was forced to pursue an entirely new solution, one that few could have imagined, attacking the ants, not with chemicals, but with another insect. But the target wasn't the ants. The real objective was the yellow lack scale the fuel factory powering the entire yellow crazy ant empire. That solution came in the form of the parasitic wasp, Tacardi effigus somervillae, a creature so tiny it could fit on the head of a pin, 
Despite its size, each wasp is a true biological agent. It seeks out yellow lac scales, pierces their bodies, and lays its eggs inside. The wasp larvae then consume the scale insect from within until only a hollow shell remains. Once the scales disappear, the supply of honeydew runs dry, and with it, the ants lose the fuel they need to continue expanding. However, this strategy came with enormous risks. Australia had already paid dearly for a past biological mistake. The introduction of cane toads in 1935, which plagued the continent for nearly a century. No one wanted to repeat that disaster. Before the parasitic wasps were approved for release, scientists conducted over three years of testing on 131 native species to ensure the wasps would attack only the yellow lac scale and leave all other species untouched. Once all risks had been assessed and minimized, the campaign began. Helicopters flew over the hot zones of the super colonies, opening their doors and releasing 18,000 parasitic wasps, a silent army carrying the hope of turning the tide. No noise, no chemicals, no forests blanketed in toxic bait, only tiny, nearly invisible creatures quietly drifting into the treetops to carry out their mission, to sever the energy supply line of the yellow crazy ant empire. In the first few months after the parasitic wasps were released, no one dared to hope for much. The wasps were tiny, the scale insects were everywhere, and the yellow crazy ants still dominated nearly the entire forest canopy. But then, the first signs began to appear, quietly but unmistakably. Yellow lac scales gradually disappeared from branches once coated in sticky honeydew. With no more honeydew to fuel them, the yellow crazy ant super colonies began to weaken. Their spread slowed. Ant densities dropped sharply in many areas, especially where parasitic wasps had been released in large numbers. Then, two years after the moment helicopters opened their doors to unleash that tiny airborne army, scientists returned to the biggest hotspot, a place that had once recorded 700 ants per square meter. What they saw left the entire team stunned. Fewer than 10 ants remained alive. An empire that had once ruled the forest was now nothing but ruins. Not long after, the island's true residents began to return. Red crabs, once decimated by the tens of millions, were appearing again along forest trails. They dug burrows, cleared leaf litter, and reactivated the ecosystem like a machine being oiled after years of paralysis. The number of red crabs participating in the migration surged from 40 to 50 million to over 100 million in 2024 a revival no one had dared to imagine at the height of the crisis. The thick layers of dead, flammable leaves began to disappear. Forest patches once blanketed in black mold started to turn green again. Endemic bird species like Abbott's boobies stopped declining. An entire ecosystem, once on the verge of collapse, was slowly coming back to life. But the story is far from over. Although parasitic wasps have helped Christmas Island recover in remarkable ways, danger still lurks in the deep forest zones where humans have never set foot. The yellow crazy ants haven't disappeared entirely, they've simply retreated into untreated areas where yellow lac scales still survive and provide enough honeydew to sustain the remnants of their super colonies. Each rainy season, billions of ants rise again from the soil. A single misstep in management could trigger a resurgence, allowing them to spread back into controlled zones and rebuild their empire faster than anyone might expect. The story on Christmas Island isn't just about ants, crabs, or wasps. It's a powerful reminder that even ecosystems sustained over millions of years can be shattered by a single human misstep. But at the same time, it shows that nature still holds the power to heal, if we listen, understand, and act with care. The battle between the red crabs, yellow crazy ants, and the parasitic wasp army is far from over. No one knows whether the ants hiding deep in the forest will one day rise again stronger, or if these tiny ecological machines will be enough to keep the balance intact in the long run. But one thing is certain. Every decision we make today will shape the future of an ecosystem over 100 million years in the making. What do you think about the solution of using parasitic wasps? Are we on the right path? 
or are we risking a repeat of past biological mistakes? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to explore more of the planet's strangest ecological stories, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next journey with Terran Works. See you in the next video.